Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about the art of software design. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, why is it that software teams have abandoned upfront design, diagrams, documentation and modeling? Is the art of software design getting lost? Nope. I wouldn't say so, uh, and I don't, don't really think that it's necessarily the case that people have abandoned these practices. I will say that this, these are the practices of someone who has on average had a different role in, well, in the past at the very least. So the argument that I will make is that for a traditional architect, these are the tools of, of the trade for the most of, most of the time. and. The thing is that you leverage different things to le to different degrees, in my opinion, depending on what sort of tools you feel most comfortable with. So, in the traditional uh, in the traditional setup, an architect may or may not have been someone who has a fairly good understanding of software development. It might have been, have been someone who was a software developer, but at some point, especially when you become an enterprise level one, you abandoned usually the daily coding for meetings business oriented oriented thing administration and so forth and so forth and design systems rather than do the coding and the thing that I usually tell people uh, happens when you do that uh, is that you get detached from the actual coding now, for the software developers, on the other hand, the most of what their focus is about is of, on the coding part of the thing, right? And so what usually happens is that you have two people, two groups that have now created a divide between them, whereas the thing that you are describing should exist within the same, like it should be within the software developer to do this. but it's not happening usually because of one very specific reason and that is that most software developers don't really consider long-term planning or alignment or things like that. What usually software developers will do, which is uh, not that great all the time, is that they will think about everything that they do as a project or in a product oriented mindset. It's very similar to how designers work. You give them a specification for what they're supposed to design and then they design that thing usually in isolation without any thought of long term scaling or things like that or fitting something into a larger, um, larger ecosystem because now their job is done. Same thing with the software developers. You give them a ticket or a, a story card, they fix that thing and then they move on to the next one. Now the problem with that is, uh, I've made this uh, analogy to a road, it's like you're asking them to make a brick and then you take that brick and you put it on the road. The problem is that if you only know how to make a brick or like a cobblestone or something like that and you don't actually think about how that's going to fit into the overall road you're de dealing with, you're going to have a really bumpy road. If to make it a smooth and nice experience you need to have people who understand that bigger perspective. Now as I said, the reason why that's usually not happening is because you're offloading those sorts of responsibilities to the architect or the tech lead or the, you can call it like the roles change all the time guys. You can offload that but the reality is that both are necessary in the software developers level in order for you to make something useful or something that really fits. This is why I tell people that there is no you know, you as a software developer, you sort of have to learn a bit of the domain that you're working in in order to make something really useful. Because if you just do the code monkey thing, you're always going to end up building really bad stuff. So the art isn't gone. It's more that there's a set of practices that most people don't follow. And some of this is redundant. So you talk about upfront design. Do you need to apply that to every single situation? Diagrams, are they useful? all the time. Documentation, is that useful? Well, yeah, yes and no it is. Modeling, well, you're modeling things all the time, but I think that you're talking about is like UML type of things where you like on paper model out how the system is going to work. These things are still happening. They're always happening in a healthy team and so forth. It's just that you don't take the time to document or write down all the things that 
you're talking about and that's the idea of uh, well it's not necessarily the idea but that has a more of a lean process idea behind it because if you do the waterfall thing then well it doesn't have to be waterfall I hope you understand what I'm saying but if you do the upfront investment into all the documentation and things like that which is still happening that might actually end up being really bad for you because we walked away from that due to the fact that it takes longer it's a theoretical exercise and it's a way for you to model something that you don't truly understand until you start coding a little bit so that you have some type of blueprint to follow. As I said, the problem with that is that it might not reflect reality. It might Documentation needs to be updated and documentation needs to be maintained and when you start coding you might find out that your theoretical upfront abstraction that you created doesn't actually fit. You have oversights which is the reason why we can't ever find a good time estimate for most things because the reality of coding is that you might plan for something then you do a little bit of work and you realize that the plan has to change because you have new insights and then you do a little bit of coding and then you have new insights and you continue that process until the thing is shipped. That does not work usually if you have all this upfront documentation and investment and so forth and so forth. The sweet spot I will argue is if you can do both where you have enough documentation and modeling and alignment at each step that you're taking so you basically talk about what you're going to build, create a shared vision of the code that is going to be shipped and how to do certain things, you can document that. Then you move forward, realize that the world changed and the code changed and then you update those documents that you've created and then you take the next step. This is where the human factor becomes a problem because very very few, I would say no one, I've never met uh, apart from myself, honest to God, uh, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back here, but, but apart from myself I've never seen a, uh, a software team uh, who has a plan for how to keep their documentation updated and relevant. And it's actually, I've told you a hundred guy, time guys, it's actually as simple as just having a monthly review of your documentation, that's all you need. But nobody does it because of the human factor. Humans are lazy and forgetful. And as I've said uh, as well, this is my personal take on humanity. If you want a human to do something over time, you have to either have a physical limitation or an incentive system. If you, have, if you don't have any of those two things, it's not going to happen. And this is the reason why I argue that this is what you think is happening, that the software design is getting lost, or like that art is going away. It's not. It's just that we have moved to a workflow where people don't have to do it anymore because the architect is no longer doing it for the software developers and they don't feel like they need to because they can progress without having to do it. So the value of the thing that you are talking about falls away due to usually pure laziness. It is still happening, just not in the way it used to happen when someone had it as a full-time profession to do it. So what I want you to take away from this is that no, designs, diagrams, documentation, modeling is still happening. It's just that it might not be as frequent as you or may have ex been exposed to in the past because usually these sorts of things are more administrative tasks which the software developers themselves don't really do because they're interested in the coding part and the delivery and all of this sort of stuff. This is the sort of stuff an architect might be more inclined to do but since more and more teams are going towards an agile DevOps type of orientation fewer and fewer architects are found and the reality is that the higher up you go as an architect the more decoupled you get from the actual coding and so your documentation basically becomes a very expensive uh, notion page or confluence page somewhere that nobody ever reads which is the problem with having documentation because if it's not used or it's not relevant or so forth and so forth nobody cares about it and then someone starts and realizes there is no documentation they bitch and whine about that so that's the endless uh, ungratefulness of documentation if you have it it takes time to make it and maintain it and people don't like that if you don't have it people get upset because you don't have it and then you keep on spinning spinning and spinning and spinning so I don't think that it's uh, that the software design process is getting lost it's just it's happening but it's happening closer to the code and there's not as much bureaucracy and uh, documentation being written as a result of it that's as I said not always a good thing but it's not a wholly bad thing either because of what I said if you model and document things too much in theory up front, you're just going to end up with a bunch of useless documentation that nobody has any value from. 
But on the other hand, if you never write anything and you don't maintain any documentation, people will be upset that there is nothing. So it's all about that sweet spot, as I like to call it. Have a great day.